Endless Brooklyn is a new movie directed by Edward Norton, and it stars Edward Norton, and it has a good cast in this movie as well. Bruce Willis, Gugu, Manbartha Raw, and Alec Baldwin. I forgot the author's name, but the book took place in 1999, but Edward Norton decided to change it and make the movie take place in 1950. This movie revolves around Edward Norton's character named Lionel. He suffers from Tourette's Syndrome, and he must solve the murder of his mentor, Frank Mena. And while he gets deeper into solving his murder, he finds more corruption within the city, revolving around gentrification and we have our movie Motherless Brooklyn. I have to say, but the, the highlight in this whole entire movie was Edward Norton. He plays a character with who has Tourette's Syndrome, and I thought that Edward Norton did a fantastic job of portraying the character, especially with Tourette's Syndrome. You can tell that he actually did his homework and actually did research before he did his performance as this character with Tourette's Syndrome. And the way he performed his character was just surreal, and I thought that he did a fantastic job of just really executing and making it seem like it was believable. I, there was not a moment where I felt like, okay, oh, he, 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 this guy blew me away, especially revolving around his performance. He's trying to solve the murder of, you know, his mentor, and throughout the movie, he has exceptional skills. Based off of his Tourette's syndrome, he, that also gives him the ability to actually remember almost everything that transpired. Like, he has a, he can actually remember the conversations you had, like, 20 minutes prior, like exactly word for word, and he uses that to solve the mystery revolving around the murder of his mentor. So the also the performances from the outside cast, uh, Alec Baldwin and Gugu Mbatha Raw, the act they did a good job. But I feel like the highlight in his whole entire movie was Edward Norton. I felt like Edward Norton did a really good job of capturing the atmosphere of an actual 1950s setting of Brooklyn. It has that little surreal, dark New York feel to it. The, the cinematography was pretty good as well. I did find myself, you know, admiring the lighting and the atmosphere of the Brooklyn. Outside of the directing style, some, the story itself is kind of a, a slow burn. Like this movie has a like a, like has a pacing issue. I, I feel like because this movie is two hours and twenty four hours long, and you felt that, and that almost made me fall asleep. And and it was just really actually it was a little boring. I didn't really find myself like captivated into the plot itself. I had to keep myself awake. And also the, the music was pretty good and I like how they have the, the jazz playing in the background and stuff like that but almost every scene there is jazz playing in the background and the jazz music was so soft and just you know, play at the right tone and, and even when the characters are talking there is music playing in the background it's almost like watching an episode of Sopranos and that was a little bit irritating for me because I just wanted them to they was doing it so much that it was almost making me fall asleep. There is a couple of subplots that they introduce in this movie. The, the character discovers more, more to the actual case to his revolving around his, his murder of his mentor. The, the film tries to like give out subplots revolving around corruption, of around gentrification, and corruption revolving around racism. And there is this like this mysterious MacGuffin that these other characters are trying to look for and they slowly you know antagonize the main character Lionel Azrog and I felt like the it kind of made the narrative jumbled a little bit. And the film does have a few tropes from your everyday natural detective New York film but outside of all that the best thing about this whole entire movie was Edward Norton's performance because he plays a character with Tourette's syndrome and I thought he did a good job of portraying a character with Tourette's and but outside of that, I just find this movie a little bit boring. And there was times where I had to check my phone to make sure that, you know, what time is it? What time is it? Because this movie has had a hard time of trying to make me captivated into the story. And the music playing in the background didn't really help as much because it made me want to fall asleep at times. The movie does have heart revolving around Edward Norton's character. But still, I wouldn't really recommend to go see it in theaters. It's probably wait till it's on Blu-ray and DVD. So I'm gonna give Motherless Brooklyn a Michael Keaton Batman. This is an average movie at best. I you I I found some enjoyment, but it is slow burn and it is it, you really gotta force yourself to stay awake at times to just to get through the story. And the story has a few subplots that doesn't really mesh with one another. It's just it's kind of jumbled at times. So other than that, it's fine. So that's my review of Motherless Brooklyn. Well, have you seen Motherless Brooklyn? What are your thoughts? Comment below and let's talk about it. And I'll see you guys in the next review. And if you like everything you see and you agree, subscribe to my channel and join me and the Batman family. I'll have more Batman-tastic reviews in the way. You have been warned. Till then, ciao.